The watershed management plan was really funded through the NEP, through state agencies, and then local governments, and the Lake Forest Property Owners Association. We had political interest, we had economic interest, we had community interest, and then we had governmental interest. And all these interests, uh, sometimes opposing one another in the scheme of things and in dollars. And the NEP was able to bring all those different interests together and set up a common goal for the watershed. In 2015, the first stream restoration in Joe's Branch received a Gulf Guardian Award for bringing together a range of partners to address the unchecked volume and velocity of stormwater runoff, a side effect of community growth. Spanish Fort and Daphne both passed, or will soon pass, comprehensive regulations that will protect the watershed from further stream degradation. Starting in 2016, an additional 8,400 feet of degraded stream will be restored throughout the Joe's Branch, Doleaf Creek, and Tiawassee Creek subwatersheds. Just driving across after a rain event from Mobile to Daphne, instead of looking at Doleaf Creek and seeing an orange stream, it was not orange. And that profoundly impacted me after 10 years of being involved in this to see the actual results of better water quality coming into Mobile Bay. Well, we got engaged in working with the Mobile Bay National Estuary Program and partnering with our Leadership Academy where we took citizens, emerging leaders, reluctant leaders from the community, uh, wanted to get them more engaged and involved in what was happening. And so the residents learned about, you know, what a watershed is, uh, why Three Mile Creek needs to be properly maintained, how it potentially can help in a reduction of flooding, uh, reduction in climate change impacts, as well as improve water quality. We went into the community to talk with residents about their level of awareness or preparedness for a natural disaster. And the whole idea was to engage residents to see if they were even aware that they lived in a watershed mm. and to further explore how resilient they were to respond should a natural disaster occur, such as a Hurricane Katrina. As far as the watershed, and we, we need the data. We need to know where we're at, you know. We don't need to be ignorant. We, we need to... We need to be able to look and see where we're at with it and, and learn from it. I think one of the biggest things, especially in this area that we're looking at, is flooding. Um, so running the SLAM and the slosh models, especially in Viola Battery, um, and looking at the data, uh, noticing that a lot of their critical infrastructure is in flood prone areas. So one of the things that we're proposing and, and talking with the community is about maybe relocating some of those critical infrastructure uh, buildings um, so that in the event of, uh, you know, the imminent sea level rise, climate change issues, uh, hurricanes, which are, are prominent in this area, uh, making sure that those uh, critical infrastructure, you know, your civil works, your firemen, uh, your police station, all those people are able to respond and take care of the local community uh, in the face of these events.